Today on Dead Dodge Garage, Dodge Trucks. I know, I really keep rolling out the hits, don't I? Yeah, the thing is though, this truck's driving to Wisconsin tomorrow and I'm not gonna have all three of these styles gathered here anymore, so I thought I'd take this opportunity to take a look at the three different classic Dodge truck cab styles. It just so happens I also have all three bed styles, so that's kind of neat. All of these trucks are different years, this one being the oldest at 1974. Thing is, it doesn't really matter. The cabs are all the same for a very long time. Okay, 72 to 80 if you want to be really technical, but they're also extremely, extremely similar to the earlier cabs from 81 to 93. These trucks have many different names. The one used commonly, colloquially you might say, is first gen. That's because they're the first generation of pickups that use the Ram name, although they didn't get that until 1981, I believe. Before that, they were just Dodge trucks. Technically, they were labeled D and W. D meaning two-wheel drive, and W meaning four. This particular model here is a 1979 D-150. The 150 means half ton. They switched from 100 to 300 and up to 150, 250, etc. somewhere around 80 but they started using the 150 a little earlier than that as a slightly heavier duty half ton truck. If there really is any technical difference between a 100 and a 150, it's probably not very important. As you can see, the 79 is a traditional single cab pickup with a traditional standard or step side bed. The step side bed lasted until 1984, I believe. I think it was gone for the 85 model year. And originally it was available in a six foot or an eight foot length, although that became increasingly rare. I think they were totally gone by 79, but I could be wrong. Note here on this back corner, it's round. You're gonna see that same shape on all three of these cabs, but pay attention to that because a later cab has a line there. Incidentally, that's only found on single cabs. Pay attention to this door shape as well. That's gonna be important in a minute here. The single cab truck was the smallest the simplest, and naturally, the cheapest. This truck here would have been about the cheapest of all with the single cab and the short step side bed. I just so happen to have a few swept line single cabs handy as well. And you can see the similar DNA with all well, the cab shape and the door frame shape. Beyond that, they are quite different, but um, in this body design, you could only get a regular two door cab like this one or a crew cab with a second set of doors. They were funny looking. In 72, that single cab was your only option. In 73, Dodge pioneered this. What we know today as an extended cab was called the Club Cab. It featured that obvious extra space right behind the front door and little flip down rear seats. Now here's an important note. Everything from here forward, basically the same. These are exactly the same doors. You'll recognize that shape right there. They kind of mimic that shape back here to try and give the design, you know, cohesion. Feel free to ignore the absolutely horrible mess in here and admire the flip down side seats. These are special to the club cab. Also note these special panels. There's also a clip there that would have held the seat belt. I don't know if the seat belts are even in here. If they are, they're probably disgusting. The little jump seats are fine, I guess. Can't really put full size people on them. They're definitely good for children. Let it be known though, I owned one of these trucks when my daughter was born and Putting a baby seat on that is a no. I got rid of it in favor of a second gen Ram. Consistent viewers of this channel will recognize this truck from several previous videos, with the most recent being the removal of the 318. I had to remove it because the crank was broken into two pieces. Yeah, that's fun. Anyway, people who do know this truck know that it's kind of something special. It's a five lug W, four wheel drive, 100 trek and that's interesting it's also a long bed the vast majority of trucks in this body configuration are 200s three quarter ton trucks with heavier axles underneath with eight lugs of course heavier springs and more often than not big blocks a note on this special w100 club cab long bed truck in the comments of the recent video i did about the exploded engine someone indicated that the frame under this thing would be the same as a 200 just for the record, it is, but it's also the same as a 100. I just checked with the measuring tape and they're both six inches, so figure that one out. I can't tell you if there's other strengthening or 
things that aren't present in shorter W100 trucks, but I can tell you that measurement's the same. The club cab was a neat idea, and Ford liked it so much they took it and ran with it. General Motors didn't catch up until the GMT 400 in 1987 or whatever that was. But needless to say, it kind of changed the landscape of pickups in general. You see these all the time now. Dodge continued production of the club cab into the second generation of Ram truck. Obviously, eventually, they got doors like these. That happened in 1998, although not all trucks were so equipped on up to, I believe, 2000. Dodge went away from those little flippy doors and obviously the enclosed club cab in general in 2003 with the release of this, the third gen Ram, and they never looked back. Nowadays, you can get them with short back doors or big back doors, but none of them open the wrong way and none of them have fixed panels here. And that brings us to this, the classic crew cab Dodge. This body was also released in 1973. In fact, the light blue truck that I recently showed on that ranch video is a first year 1973 crew. It's a W200. The truck you see before you wants to be a W200 as it is four wheel drive, but it's actually an original D200 two wheel drive truck that was converted. It's a crew cab, short bed. More on the bed in a minute. You should instantly recognize the front door shape as being exactly the same as the single cab and the extended cab or club cab. But if you don't, there, look, it's exactly the same. Also note this shape right here. It's the same as the single cab too. In fact, all crew cabs are exactly the same from the beginning of production in 73 until the end of the line in 85 or so. And again, the same is true of the extended club cab truck. Why did they change the single cab? I don't know. Seemed like a good idea at the time, I guess. Personally, I'm assuming that the production on the crew cab was low enough that it just wasn't worth modernizing them. In 81, the Ram got a redesigned hood, redesigned grille, of course, a little bit different side profile. It got a straight line that ran down the truck right here. But the interesting thing is it faded out right there toward the back of the front door, which means there was no line on the cab or the rear door. That means they could leave the rear doors on the crew cab exactly the same. This is why you see Cummins trucks made out of these crew cabs, even though none were ever made from the factory. It's easy to do. You take the newer front clip, the newer front doors with, you know, power windows, that sort of thing, the newer dash panel with the Cummins instrumentation, and you drop all of that onto this truck. It bolts right on. Hey, I just found my Demon battery. I was wondering where that was. There's even more interesting stuff too. For probably the same reason they never changed the roof, they never changed the rear doors. So there's one crew cab rear door and one crew cab rear door panel. It's just kind of a shortened version of the front panel, of course. So if you have some from a 73, they're gonna bolt right onto an 85, no problem. Because they didn't feel like reinventing the rear door panel on the crew cab, they never changed the front door panels either. So while single cabs and club cabs got the fancier, you know, more full door panel design, different armrests and all that, the crew cab never changed. It kept this. Although I don't actually have the production figures, I'm sure the club cab production was much higher than the crew. And for that reason, it did get modernized to a certain degree. But again, they never did change that part of the cab or the roof panel. They're all exactly like this till the end in 1993. The march of time tends to change things and desire for crew cab trucks is one of those things. These are now pretty highly sought after. Everybody wants one. What used to be a special purpose vehicle, that is a four door crew cab pickup truck, is now something more like an SUV. To the point that four door trucks look normal and single cab modern trucks just look weird, don't they? And for that reason, a club cab Dodge truck is, well, still pretty much worthless. While a crew cab, especially a nice one like this, that's a different story. As someone who's restored a crew cab truck before, uh, this one, I can tell you it's a lot of work, but very rewarding. This thing's awesome. This probably goes without saying, but drivetrain stuff swaps between all of these trucks. Albeit with the, you know, 100, 200, 300 differences. So that's the story on the cabs. How about beds? This is a six foot fleet side, I guess you would call it. The fancier wider bed, which matches the shape and contour of the cab, unlike the conventional bed. It took a while, but I've recently realized I'm a stepside guy. 
I love the utilitarian nature of this thing. I love the stylized fender. I just like the simplicity. Now, they're all horribly beat because well, they're not very well made. And the tailgates are all destroyed. And you have to attach chains to them for them to even function. But there's just something cool about that. I especially like the eight foot step side, but that's a different story entirely. I was somewhat surprised to learn while trying to sell this truck that many people don't like the step side. They actually prefer the wider fleet side looking bed. In fact, one gentleman was adamant that he would rip that off and put the other style on there. Why would you do that? I don't know. Personal preference, I guess. Anyway, this is the six foot, let's call it the wide bed on the 78 crew cab four wheel drive W200 truck here. And as you can see, it's got cool humps over the wheel wells. It's got that character line there that matches the front fenders. It has one gas tank, although it's actually set up with provisions for two. Of course, the tail lights and tailgate are common to the eight foot bed, so those parts are easy to get a hold of. Well, kind of. Um, the tailgates are often bad. New tail lights are actually still in production, so that's cool. And here's the eight foot stylized bed on my club cap truck. You can see right away, the style is very similar. It's got the same line, of course. This one also just has the one gas tank, but it does have a provision for a second. It's just not there on this bed. You can see most of the extra length is here ahead of the axle, but there is an extra three inches behind it. So even that part of the panel is actually different. Here's what I mean when I say there's a provision for a rear fuel tank. That piece is present on all of these beds, six foot and eight foot. You can see the very common wheel well damage here from crap being thrown in the bed over the years. And also the bed floor is bent. They tend to kind of wave. Also, it's pretty tough metal. I've tried to straighten a bed floor on the crew cab over there with a sledgehammer before and that didn't work very well. This bed again was in use in this exact form from 1972 through 1980. When they restyled the cab and added the line there, they also restyled the bed and added a matching straight line through here. They got rid of that shape. It looks more simple, I guess. The tailgate design is also very different. The pull handle setup's a little different. They don't look the same at all, but I did actually recently see a later tailgate on an earlier bed. I didn't know you could do that, but I guess you can. Strangely enough, I don't have a later series truck to show you currently. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I normally keep one around. All I have currently is well, these three and a power wagon, two Rams and three swept lines. Okay, and a Dakota, but I don't want to talk about that. I mostly wanted to talk about the cabs and bed designs today, but I guess we better take a quick look at this, the bird bath hood. That might be one of the coolest and also most annoying things about these trucks. You can see right there how they got that name. I don't have an engine to demonstrate on in this particular truck at present, but uh, when you open the hood after a good rain, all of that goes right down onto your engine. And if it's hot, it makes a cool steam cloud. It's kind of neat. As you can see, the 79 D100 has the later style hood. No bird bath. It's also raised here. And if you follow that line back, it's also raised here at the cowl, which necessitates taller wiper pivots. So one of the things you'll run into if you're gonna do one of the aforementioned come and swaps on the crew cab, you may well have to swap to that if you have the earlier style like that course why you'd want to take the awesome bird bath hood off I don't know I believe this hood was released in 79 with the stacked headlight grill although some of these were optional with round headlights that's a different story entirely I believe this design carried over till the very end in 93 the panel may not be exactly the same but it's definitely similar either way there's a lot more I could say about this series of Dodge trucks like for instance how this grill the 74 5 six is my favorite unlike everyone else who for some reason prefer the 78 but i do have a head job on a cummins truck to finish so i guess i better get back to that hopefully you learned something or at least enjoyed looking at these dodge trucks i certainly do that's why i try to keep 10 of them around at all times just makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside you know my new friend jason will be here to pick this unit up tomorrow i'm looking forward to getting the parking space back but i will miss it it's awesome of all of the Dodge trucks I've ever owned, this is the most solid and one of the most fun and nice to drive. So yeah, it's gotta go. You can also definitely look forward to more video on the crew cab as I get this thing finished up and ready for its voyage south, which it'll be doing on a transport truck. 
Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Geese. There it goes. <laughs> Off to Wisconsin.